Hello, everyone. Bonjour, and welcome to the presentation of the 2022 CHRA, CHRA Awards sponsored by Yardi Canada. You know, I, I've been with CHRA for over six years, and I've been so fortunate to learn about amazing, innovative work of our members through the presentation of these awards. Um, award recipients serve as role models. They help inspire us all in everything we do. Now, of course, as you've heard me say over the past couple of days, I wish we could be showcasing these honorees in person. Uh, they deserve it, but of course, we're still pleased that they can join with us here today. Uh, les prix nationaux de, de la CRU récompensent les organisations et les personnes qui ont dirigé et continuent de mener les changements positifs importants dans le secteur de logement abordable. En honorant ces organisations et individus qui sont des chefs de file dans notre secteur, et qui font preuve d'excellence dans tout ce qu'ils font. La CRU est en mesure de promouvoir et de mettre en valeur les personnes et les organisations qui naviguent dans ce paysage changeant avec détermination et vraiment de l'impact. So, CHRA is very pleased to have, once again, Yardi Canada sponsor today's presentation. Um, Yardi is, of course, well known throughout the Canadian affordable housing sector for its commitment to innovation, to excellence, and to determination, which makes Yardi a natural fit for this event. So, donc, un immense merci à Yardi Canada, notre commanditaire officiel de cérémonie de prix. And so, with that, I'd like to introduce Harvey Dickerson from Yardi Canada to say a few words. Harvey, floor is yours. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you to the CHRA team for putting together this year's virtual event. This is an annual and much cherished tradition for us at Yardi Canada, where I have the pleasure to thank you for the opportunity to participate in the Congress. At Yardi Canada, we've been working very hard to support the growth and passion that we see in this industry. The Congress has always been a fantastic venue where we are able to come together with the industry to help fuel that vision and direction. Today, I want to thank you again for bringing us into this circle. And I look forward to a time in the future where we can all be together again in person. Thank you, Harvey, and couldn't agree more. Um, so given that Yardi is really a community builder in the nonprofit and social housing sector, um, why don't you go ahead and, and it would just make sense if you can present the first award today, which is the CHRA Community Builder Award. Thanks, Jeff. It's my pleasure to present the Community Builder Award. This award recognizes an individual, a business, or an organization that has a major impact at the community level in promoting affordable housing and or preventing and ending homelessness. Ness, excuse me. This year's recipient has a 43-year history of delivering safe and affordable housing in the Quebec City region. Aside from their work in managing 4,000 units of affordable housing, this year's recipient was retained by Lobert Riviere, a shelter and multi-service center located in downtown Quebec City to improve and expand its solution so they could serve a larger number of clients. The solution resulted in an innovative new building that among other things was able to offer 82 rooms for people in vulnerable and homeless situations, 18 housing units with a rent supplement program for single people aged over 50, and 15 additional meeting spaces to meet constituent needs throughout the year. The project also incorporated a dining room to accommodate 175 people a day to encourage socialization among homeless and vulnerable populations and classrooms to offer programs aimed at apprenticeship and work reintegration programs. Just as importantly, the project met significant sustainability and environmental standards, including a 30% reduction in energy use and a 45% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions in relation to national energy code standards. Through this project and throughout their history, this year's recipient has demonstrated exemplary uh, dedication to their community. And so that, that is why CRHA is proud to present the 2022 Community Builder Award to Action Habitation. Please watch. The 
the 2022 recipient of the CHRA Community Builder Award is Action Habitation. Action Habitation has worked to preserve and develop social and community housing in the Quebec region for 43 years. The organization currently manages 4,000 housing units and has plans to develop 1,000 more. Le Bruvier, a shelter and multi-service center located in downtown Quebec City, called on Action Habitation to manage a project to improve its spaces. For many years, Le Bruvier was forced to turn down clients due to a lack of space. Action Habitation worked with the organization to develop a new facility that has dramatically increased the number of people served by Le Bruvier and acts as a model for community services collaboration and energy efficient developments. Mon nom est Georges Amio, je suis président du conseil d'administration de la maison depuis fort quelques années déjà, donc j'ai acquis une belle expérience, mais surtout, j'ai joui d'un bel entourage. Nous sommes donc aujourd'hui logés dans un nouveau bâtiment et euh, le bâtiment est adapté à nous, alors qu'avant, on avait une gymnastique à faire, c'est-à-dire on avait à s'adapter nous au bâtiment. On est magnifiquement logés parce que finalement, on est au cœur de notre clientèle et euh, on dessert maintenant pratiquement le double de services et on accueille le double de, de clientèle par jour euh, de ce qu'on faisait avant. Alors, c'est un succès. Bonjour, je m'appelle Anne Côté, je suis architecte pour la firme Lafont Côté Architecte. C'est nous qui avons eu euh, le privilège de concevoir le bâtiment de la Maison Laubrivière. Euh, ce qu'il y a d'exceptionnel, c'est qu'on a créé un pliage des feuilles d'aluminium qui nous a permis de faire euh, de très grands panneaux avec la moitié de moins de matière, donc moins cher, pour un panneau d'aluminium anodisé qui est d'une grande qualité. Il euh, faut dire aussi que l'ensemble du bâtiment, est en, en étant en aluminium anodisé, est 100 recyclable parce qu'il n'y a aucune peinture euh, sur le bâtiment. Toute la vie à l'intérieur du bâtiment s'exprime à travers les ouvertures. Donc, partout où il y a des services communautaires et des espaces publics, on a des grands murs rideaux complètement vitrés. Et euh, sinon, bien, les, la, la forme des fenêtres s'adapte à la fonction de la pièce, donc des plus petites fenêtres pour les chambres et des plus grandes fenêtres dans les logements. Bonjour, mon nom est Régent Boilard d'Action Habitation. Je suis coordonnateur général. Dès le départ du projet, notre organisation s'est fixée quatre euh, objectifs euh, financiers, quatre indicateurs de performance économique pour la maison de rivière Dans un premier temps, on voulait atteindre un prêt ratio le plus bas possible. Donc, le, dans le cas de la maison de rivière le service de la dette est extrêmement bas. On est à 6 du prêt valeur. En deuxième cas, on voulait maintenir l'exemption de taxes de l'organisme qu'on va aller défendre devant le tribunal administratif du Québec pour sauver 80 000 par année. En troisième cas, on a, on a conçu un bâtiment éco-énergétique qui, euh, qui ne demande pas plus de charges que 17 kWh par mètre carré dans le bâtiment, ce qui permet des économies de 100 000 par année. Et à la toute fin, on a choisi des matériaux extrêmement durables et qui, qui facilitent l'entretien du bâtiment et minimisent les frais d'entretien, de, de, ce qui permet à la Maison de rivière d'investir ses sommes économisées dans le service à la clientèle et le soutien de la clientèle. I'd now like to welcome Mr. Bruno Dion to accept the 2022 CHRA Community Builder Award. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Au nom de Action Habitation de Québec, je suis très heureux et honoré de recevoir aujourd'hui le prix uh, du bâtisseur communautaire 2022. Our project to build a new shelter for the homeless and those of risk of becoming homeless has been 10 years in the making and has involved many challenges. C'est le résultat d'un long processus, d'un partenariat solide et durable entre Action Habitation, l'organisme communautaire L'Aubrivière et la firme d'architecture Lafont Côté. Il a été permis grâce à du financement à la fois fédéral, provincial et municipal, et nous sommes très fiers du résultat collectif obtenu des meilleurs services pour les personnes itinérantes et à risque d'itinérance, des aménagements adaptés aux besoins à la fois de la clientèle et de l'équipe bénévole et salariée de l'Aubrivière, un édifice ultra performant en énergie et très facile d'entretien grâce notamment à son enveloppe d'aluminium qui a été conçue par une firme locale et une hypothèque très faible qui permet de concentrer l'offre sur les services en tant que tel. 
Il s'agit donc pour nous d'un triple succès, social, architectural et environnemental. This prize from the CHRA is an important symbolic recognition of the project CIS incomes from our peers. It recognizes the work of Action Habitation, Lobe Rivière, La Foncote, as well as uh, all of those who believed in and contributed to this project. Donc, merci encore une fois pour votre reconnaissance et votre confiance et uh, bonne rencontre 2022. Mes félicitations à Bruno et à l'Action de l'habitation du Québec. Uh, uh, très uh, très uh, projet de, de grand succès. Uh, et merci Harvey et Yard du Canada pour votre commanditaire pour cette session aujourd'hui. Donc, notre prochain prix est le prix de développement durable de la CRU. Uh, and this year, I'm very pleased to announce that the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Green Municipal Fund will be sponsoring the Sustainability Award over the coming year. And so it's only fitting and we thought logical that the Green Municipal Fund present this year's award. So in order to do that, I'm pleased to welcome Jennifer Artfield, Lead Sustainable Affordable Housing with the FCM Green Municipal Fund to present this year's Sustainability Award. Jen, over to you. Thanks, Jeff. FCM is excited to be coming on board as an award sponsor next year. The Sustainability Award recognizes an organization, business, or partnership that has undertaken a program or a new build or retrofit project that advances sustainable development, resource conservation, or community renewal. This year's recipient was based on their Plainsview Townhomes Project, a mixed model affordable housing development in Regina. Completed in October 2021, it's the first affordable housing development to achieve net zero energy in the province of Saskatchewan. The energy reduction goals were realized through a number of key innovations. For instance, Plainsview incorporated significant building upgrades combined with a solar power energy generation system. They installed energy monitoring devices so that energy consumption could be tracked and monitored and improvements made. The project also relied heavily on tenant engagement Our tenant coaches will provide training to all tenants on energy conservation and seasonal troubleshooting. It's hoped that the innovations and practices introduced at Plainsview can be incorporated and replicated in other projects in Saskatchewan and throughout Canada. These are just a few examples of the sustainable measures incorporated into this project, which is why it's my pleasure to announce that the recipient of the CHRA Sustainability Award is the National Affordable Housing Corporation based in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, for their Plainsview Townhomes project. Please watch. The 2022 recipient of the CHRA Sustainability Award is the National Affordable Housing Corporation's Plainsview Townhomes. Located in Regina's Rosewood Park neighborhood, Plainsview Townhomes is Saskatchewan's first affordable housing development to achieve net zero energy, with six of its units meeting that standard as part of a pilot project supported by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Utilizing innovative building technology, energy monitoring, and tenant engagement, Plainsview Townhomes is sure to serve as a model for future National Affordable Housing Corporation developments and sustainable affordable housing developments across the country. FCM's Sustainable Affordable Housing Initiative is Canada's only national initiative that supports ambitious, energy efficient, and sustainable affordable housing development through grants, loans, and capacity building resources. SAW supported the Plainsview Townhomes project through a $20,000 planning grant and a $500,000 pilot grant. We saw Plainsview as one that exceeded expectations for a pilot and was poised to generate significant environmental, social, and economic benefits that could be replicated by affordable housing providers and their communities. 
This project will support the National Affordable Housing Corporation in its next stage of development towards net zero energy building. By testing the performance of pre-constructed net zero panels equipped with solar capacity to inform the organization's future energy efficient developments. It provides an interesting opportunity to assess the cost savings and other benefits of net zero prefabricated material against a standard development. Planning for the future demonstrates leadership. Pilots like Plainsview assess innovative solutions in real world conditions, allowing other providers to replicate and scale similar action. Prefabricated homes are a cost-effective way to build housing faster and gives the National Affordable Housing Corporation the opportunity to investigate and prove the success of net zero in that context, which will demonstrate its scalability across the country. This development serves as a prime example of how organizations can be innovative and switch to energy efficient options with the support of SAW funding and resources. NHC has been committed to energy efficiency since our first project together. When I look at my clients across Canada, they are definitely a leader in this space. Much of this commitment starts at the design phase of their projects, where they work toward achieving energy efficiency outcomes while ensuring the project remains economical. In many ways, Plainsview Townhome represents a progression over several projects to achieve higher and higher standards of energy efficiency. I'm excited to see what they come up with next. Uh, the city of Regina was built on a small town Saskatchewan mentality, and that mentality basically is uh, all walks of life live together in close proximity, regardless of income or religion. And uh, this is an example of allowing that to happen in a city format where housing prices and accessibility changes. Um, the money provided is to enable families to be part of a newer community where they might not afford it. And uh, sometimes the city looks into things too. One of our big initiatives is a 2050 sustainability uh, initiative, of course, that most of the world's working towards. And with its net zero award, um, this is a shining example of the type of achievements we have to uh, get to, to meet that goal. Uh, this is a great time for it to come about as we're talking through these goals and how to achieve them. And I think it's a great example in our community of what we can do and how we should live and you know work together, go to school together, and to really understand each other's uh, walks of life and ways of being. So I think it's very well, very well due, and it's a great project. Please welcome Stacy Beaver, Chief Operating Officer with the National Affordable Housing Corporation to accept the Sustainability Awards. Congratulations, Stacy. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Congratulations to all of this year's award recipients. Uh, the CHRA awards are a testament to the amazing accomplishments of affordable housing providers and leaders across Canada. Uh, so thank you to CHRA for this year's sustainability award, recognizing our Plainsview Townhomes project among some of the recipients this year. Uh, it's also a fitting coincidence that FCM was presenting this award. Our net zero efforts at Plainsview would not have been possible without the support of FCM's Green Municipal Fund. So a huge thank you to FCM. A thank you also to the City of Regina, uh, the Saskatchewan Housing Corporation and CMHC for their support of our affordable housing goals that were part of this project. You've all helped make it possible for us to deliver 22 units of affordable homes to the Regina community. Uh, I would say that not surprisingly, a project like this was not without some of its challenges. Uh, on the construction side, um, the National Affordable Housing Corporation, we dealt with the same challenges on the supply side that everybody did during COVID last year. Uh, and for us, this meant that we weren't able to get our solar panels installed ahead of um, the winter snowfall. And on the operating side, Saskatchewan still doesn't um, credit one-to-one uh, -one for supply, extra supply energy generated back into the grid. So this does impact cost recovery potential for projects that are uh, investing in NZ upgrades. So while we're very hopeful uh, that this project can demonstrate what can be done uh, and achieved by the Saskatchewan providers, we know that this is still a challenge in our community. We still believe that the environmental benefits are certainly worthwhile uh, and we're really excited to be leading our province this way and showing what can be done. Um, and I would say true to the goals of our first net zero energy efforts, we are monitoring the energy performance, um, the 
generation and the maintenance needs of the upgraded systems at Plainsview so we can understand them uh, and apply those learnings to our upcoming projects. That is to say, we are not done our sustainability journey yet. Um, so with that, I would uh, graciously thank our team for remaining committed to the NHC schools on the affordability and sustainability front. Uh, and I guess with that, cheers to our team. Uh, this is for them and thank you to them. And also congratulations again to all of this, awards, this year's awards recipients. Thanks. Sorry, uh, on mute yet again. Uh, congratulations again uh, to Stacy and the entire team at the National Affordable Housing Corporation. Uh, I think you've really shown uh, in what you just said, uh, perseverance and determination and of course impact. So congratulations and thank you, Jen and the team at FCM Green Municipal Fund uh, mm -hmm. for sponsoring this, this award. Um, tous les deux ans, la CRU est heureuse de s'associer avec l'abri international pour présenter le prix de service international. Et donc, je suis maintenant, euh, aimerais maintenant vous présenter Barry Pinsky, directeur général de l'abri international, qui remettra le prix de service international. Donc, I, and now I'd like to introduce Barry Pinsky, the executive director of Rooftops Canada, to present the International Service Award. Barry, over to you. Thank you, Jeff. The Rooftops Canada International Service Award is presented to a CHRA member that has actively supported Rooftops Canada's international development work. And this year, we're proud to present it to one of Canada's foremost provincial housing associations. For many years, Rooftops Canada has worked very closely with the social housing sector in South Africa. This provincial association has hosted many social housing leaders from South Africa and provided scholarships to attend their provincial conferences and participate in training opportunities. They have shared information with our South African partners and posted many articles about our work together. This has helped promote Rooftops Canada's programs among their members. In short, this provincial association has played a key role in strengthening our work in South Africa, which ultimately strengthens our work everywhere. I'm pleased to announce that the recipient of the Rooftops Canada International Service Award is the British Columbia Nonprofit Housing Association. Please watch this video. The 2022 recipient of the Rooftops Canada International Service Award, recognizing a CHRA member that actively supports Rooftops Canada's international development work, is the BC Nonprofit Housing Association. BCNPHA has been an active partner of Rooftops Canada. They have provided scholarships and facilitated the participation of South African social housing professionals in its Housing Central Conference. Currently, BCNPHA is working with South Africa's National Association of Social Housing Organizations to adapt its online Ready, Set, Build course for use in South Africa. BCNPHA's ongoing commitment to supporting Rooftops Canada's initiatives and those of its partners is an inspiration to those who work in international development. Since 2014, we've been building a partnership between BCNPHA and the National Association of Social Housing Organizations in South Africa, also known as NASHA. BCNPHA and its members have hosted many South African visitors to BC, sharing their experiences about social housing development and management. These visits have also highlighted the critical role of sector organizations like BCNPHA and NASHA in housing delivery and housing policy. And it's really made a difference in the relationship NASHO has with government officials in South Africa. These exchanges help Rooftops Canada achieve its main mission, building the capacity of African housing organizations 
to help low-income families and communities secure decent, affordable housing. BC and BHA is a terrific example of Canadians engaging in international development. On behalf of Rooftops Canada, I want to thank and congratulate everyone at BC and BHA, recipients of the 2022 International Service Award. For me, honestly, the most rewarding part of the relationship with Rooftops uh, has been the learning. We've had the opportunity to send delegates on housing tours to South Africa and to Kenya, where they've been able to learn about things like government funding programs, uh, infrastructure, microcredit programs, and they bring all of that learning back to us uh, here in Vancouver and throughout British Columbia. And then at the same time, we've had uh, South African delegates visit Vancouver, tour housing developments, and they've had a particular interest in social enterprise programs here in British Columbia. And it's absolutely been an enriching experience all around. I think for us, one of the biggest learnings uh, in working with rooftops is that it's sometimes easy to get stuck uh, in trying to solve our own local problems here in British Columbia and in Canada. Uh, rooftops has provided us an incredible opportunity to learn from others uh, in solving the housing challenges in their own communities. So for example, when we look at who is most impacted uh, by housing unaffordability and who's most likely to struggle with housing, we've learned through roof rooftops about, for example, the impact of colonialism in South Africa and in Kenya. And it's really opened our eyes to looking at the impacts of colonialism right here in British Columbia on unceded territories that our members provide housing on right throughout the province. So regardless of whether we're in Canada, Kenya, South Africa, that impact of safe, secure and affordable housing is truly life changing and can really go a long way to mitigating some of those historical and present day impacts of colonialism. Please welcome Jill Atke, Executive Director of BC NPHA, to accept the Rooftops Canada International Service Award. Congratulations, Jill, to you and all of your colleagues. Wow, thank you so much, Barry. Uh, it's just such an incredible honor to be recognized by an agency doing so much fantastic housing and community development work in South Africa. This is a partnership that has brought meaning to our work uh, at BC and PHA in many ways. In particular, your work on social housing to end spatial apartheid provides useful lessons, as I mentioned in the video, for our own work on unceded territories right throughout British Columbia. And I just wanna say, although I'm the one accepting this award, the true recognition really does go to my predecessors, Alice Sundberg, Karen Stone, and Keyshawn Roy for first establishing and then maintaining these strong relationships. And then to Kay Mellership, a previous board member of BC and PHA who traveled to South Africa and Kenya on a rooftop study tour, bringing back and sharing what she learned as well as her insights on what we in BC could be learning from affordable housing providers in South Africa. Developing working relationships with affordable housing providers and advocates outside of our borders has never been more important than it is right now in this increasingly divided world. Rooftops provides us uh, with an opportunity to do just that. And I'd really encourage anyone in the housing sector in Canada to find out how you can support the good work of Rooftops. So on behalf of BC and PHA board and staff, I want to extend my thanks to Rooftops and to CHRA for this incredible award and to the board and staff especially Barry and Jeff of your organizations. I thank you for all you do. Well, first of all, uh, thank you, Barry and, and Rooftops Canada to echo what Jill said for all the fantastic international development work that you are doing. And of course, congratulations, Jill and, and the team at BC and PHA 
at CHRA, we're so proud to uh, consider you uh, such close uh, such close partners. So our next award is the CHRA Leadership Award. Uh, this is an award. This is an award that recognizes individuals who have significantly influenced or championed one or more of CHRA's pillars with systemic or national results. And this is one award that I am particularly pleased to be able to present because the recipient is in fact one of the first people that I met when I came to CHRA some six years ago. And in fact, he ended up serving three years as president of the board of our organization, a period of time when he served where he made a long lasting and meaningful impact, impacts that are continuing to see uh, to be realized today. Mais avant d'assumer ce rôle, il s'est fait un nom comme organisateur de logements communautaires au Québec, ce qui l'a amené à assumer le rôle de directeur général de la réseau québécoise des OSBL d'habitation, un poste qu'il a occupé pendant six années. En 2019, j'ai eu la chance de faire partie du comité d'embauche qui a embauché cette personne en tant que tout premier directeur général du Centre de transformation du logement communautaire. In addition to these roles, he's had a really strong impact internationally as well, having been a vocal advocate against apartheid earlier in his career, ironically just talking about South Africa. And today he serves as Vice President of the Habitat International Coalition. So it really is my pleasure to announce that the recipient of the 2022 Leadership Award is Stéphane Codivaux from Montreal, Quebec. Please watch this video. The 2022 recipient of the CHRA Leadership Award, Stefan Porivo. Stefan's defense of human rights and his fight to end inequality have been lifelong pursuits, both in his volunteerism and throughout his long career. Stefan's desire to strengthen communities through affordable housing led him to the Réseau Québécois de Osbiel d'Habitation as executive director, where he worked to broaden the organization's mandate and improve best practices in Quebec's housing sector. Stefan was part of the team that negotiated an agreement with the federal government that gave us the Community Housing Transformation Centre. He soon became its first executive director. In the center's less than three years in operation, it has supported more than 220 projects in all provinces and territories. Stefan's vision and dedication are an inspiration to current and future leaders in Canada's housing sector. As long as I've known Stefan, he's been a, a passionate advocate. He's been an innovator and a motivator. Yeah, his commitment to housing is, is unwavering. And, and I think until everybody is housed uh, properly, I don't think he'll stop. You know, I think back to uh, one of the Congresses that we had and Stefan came to, to speak and it was shortly after the release of the federal uh, government's national housing strategy. And Stefan uh, came to speak to the caucus and it was there that he said that to him, this wasn't a national housing strategy because it didn't include a strategy for Indigenous people. And until we were included, this wasn't a national housing strategy. And I feel like that really changed the momentum for us. It, uh, it gave us a voice and it legitimized what we were trying to do. And for me personally, I feel like now I have a stronger voice and that I want to tell people what I feel and what I think. And, you know, from that, I feel like I, I no longer need permission to lead. I feel like it affected the caucus that way, too. We don't need permission to lead. Uh, you know, Stefan continues to lead. Uh, he continues to innovate and he continues to motivate. I, I can't think of uh, anybody more deserving of this leadership award than Stefan. So, Stefan, uh, I just want to say thank you for all that you do 
uh, for us and uh, and for everybody involved in housing and that needs housing. Uh, thank you very much and congratulations on receiving the Leadership Award. Thank you. I worked together with Stefan primarily in a global capacity as part of the Habitat International Coalition, where he joined us as board member representing North America and Canada and as vice president for four years. I was struck by his ability to ask hard questions and to ask those questions for the sake of building greater cohesion and clarity. Stefan does this with humility, warmth, and a great humanity. He contributed to HIC in a time of great change and great challenge, very much with his strategic insight, voice of reason, voice of humanity, and voice of humor. Je pense que Stéphane mérite ce prix-là parce qu'il réussit à lancer de grands chantiers en misant avant tout sur la collaboration. Son parcours a toujours été mené par son désir de répondre aux inégalités que les populations vivent en lien avec l'occupation et la possession du territoire. Je pense qu'il continue encore aujourd'hui à donner l'exemple quant à l'attitude générale qu'il faut avoir envers ces inégalités, soit de les remettre en question et de ne pas accepter que des gens soient exclus, mais plutôt de travailler à imaginer des solutions radicales qui puissent répondre aux droits de toutes et tous d'avoir un toit au-dessus de la tête. Donc, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter un vrai, véritable ami du secteur de logement abordable, Stéphane Corriveau, le, le récipiendaire du prix de leadership de la CRU 2022. Stéphane? Merci beaucoup, Jeff, et puis merci à tous ceux qui ont été euh, associés à cette démarche-là. Donc, euh, ben, je vous remercie bien sûr le jury pour l'honneur qu'ils m'ont fait en m'accordant ce prix. Puis je salue évidemment aussi l'équipe du Centre de transformation du logement communautaire pour avoir pris l'initiative de déposer un dossier de candidature à mon nom, ainsi que ceux et celles qui l'ont appuyé avec leur lettre à l'intention du jury. Mais je dois vous avouer que j'accepte ce prix avec un certain étonnement. First, because it was, I was not aware that an application nominating me for the award had been submitted but also because I have no choice but to say that this leadership award that is being offered to me today rightfully belongs to the entire movement and to CHRA itself. An individual can show all the creativity, all their energy and all the determination in the world, but they can't do much alone. My commitment over the last 40 years to the right to land and the right to housing, both here and around the world, has been a consistent series of fortunate events. Each of those events, correspond to a person or group who has been generous enough to share their emotions, their fears, but also their hope and determination to act for a better world. I'm thinking of many comrades and friends from South Africa, Angola, Palestine, India, and Brazil, for whom the struggle for the right to housing has been too often punished with a death penalty. I'm thinking, of course, of the indigenous people of this territory, for whom access and control of land and housing have been amongst the main tools of oppression and plunder associated with colonial exploitation, but who have been continuing their struggle for 500 years now. J'ai aussi été ébloui par les luttes des simples citoyens et citoyennes un peu partout au pays qui décidaient de refuser d'être jetés à la rue par des promoteurs immobiliers rapaces. My commitment is rooted in the ability to organize and, uh, and the determination of these individuals and communities. I want to emphasize the fact that I think leadership comes from action, not the other way around. Poverty, discrimination, and injustice are at the root of action, but leadership is the fruit of action. À cet égard, je dois remercier les organisations du secteur avec lesquelles j'ai eu la chance de collaborer étroitement, dont la CRU, le Caucus autochtone, le Réseau québécois des OSBL d'habitation, la Fédération des locataires de HLM du Québec, les habitations communautaires Logia, le Comité de logement Rosemont, qui ont toutes fait le choix d'accueillir mes modestes capacités, me permettant ainsi d'être dans l'action. Je termine en saluant quelques individus avec lesquels j'ai développé une complicité sur laquelle je peux compter pour comprendre le monde. First and foremost, my life partner, Carol Boucher. Also, several CHRAs regular, such as uh, Robert Cohen, James McGregor, Robert Byers, Jacques Baudouin, Jill Adke, Alexandra Wilson, 
Pamela Ayn, Jeff Morrison, and Kim Ross. Plus one last, sorry, plus one last one. You probably don't know, but I still have to salute. He is a man who has been a mentor, but especially a friend, a colleague, a flatmate, and a comrade of the last 40 years, Pierre Baudet, who passed away a few days ago. Merci à tous et à toutes d'être là. Together, we can make a difference. Merci, Stéphane, and thank you for the leadership that you've taught me in this role and, and throughout uh, the past several years. Uh, it's been an inspiration, and, and I personally learned so much. So to hand out now our, our final award for today, I'd now like to call upon our current board president, Tim Crooks, to present the Lifetime Achievement Award. Tim, over to you. Well, thank you, Jeff. And I hope that everyone is enjoying and benefiting from Congress. There is no better way to be motivated in our own individual work than to bear witness to the excellence and the impact and the passion and the dedication represented through the award ceremony today on the housing sector. We know that housing, of course, is much more than bricks and mortar. It is the place in which we make our homes and set our lives and celebrate joy and success. And the commitments and passion represented through the individuals getting recognition today are beautiful, beautiful, again, to bear witness to and to celebrate and how motivational they are for all of us. Our final award is the CHRA Lifetime Achievement Award. This award celebrates an individual's lifetime achievement and outstanding contributions to the affordable housing sector. It doesn't mean that their work is over. It's simply a recognition of all that's been accomplished to date. Given this year's recipient's long career in promoting and creating safe, affordable housing and fighting homelessness, there's no question that this year's recipient embodies the reaching of that very high bar. This individual has decades of experience in affordable housing. Among her career highlights, she was the first executive director of the Ontario Nonprofit Housing Association in 1988 and used that experience to help nonprofit housing providers in BC to create the BC Nonprofit Housing Association in 1993. She worked with community groups and other researchers to develop homelessness plans for Vancouver, Kelowna, and nonprofit service providers. She has authored over 30 papers, studies, and research reports on homelessness and housing. Makes me feel like I've been standing still in the work that I've been doing as I hear of those accomplishments. Uh, both alone in collaboration with others, this work has been achieved, including several papers, of course, for CHRA. In her role as manager of research and information transfer for BC Housing. She managed major initiatives like the Provincial Homeless Count, the Community Benefits of Supportive Housing, the Social Return on Investment in Affordable Housing, and a review of outcomes of BC's Housing's Temporary Modular Housing Program. I could easily go on and detail the impacts and contributions that this person has made, but suffice it to say, that the lifetime of work realized by our recipient is emblematic of what the Lifetime Achievement Award is meant to honor. It is for all these reasons and many more that we are proud to announce that the 2022 CHRA Lifetime Achievement Award is presented to Debbie Krauss of Vancouver, BC. Let's have a look to learn a little bit more. The 
2022 recipient of the CHRA Lifetime Achievement Award is Deborah Kraus. Starting in 1982, Debbie's career spans the nonprofit and government housing sectors and 15 years as a consultant. She is one of the few research consultants focused solely on affordable housing and homelessness and has collaborated over the years with key researchers in the field to produce over 30 research reports. Few people in Canada have done work of such focus, breadth, depth, and quality. Deborah is someone people love to work with and is known for her generosity in mentoring young professionals. Deborah demonstrates an unwavering commitment to affordable housing and the people it serves. She and her extraordinary body of work are an inspiration to her peers. Deborah recently retired from her position as Manager of Research at BC Housing. We wish her well with her retirement plans, which include taking care of her chickens and camping. I've worked with Debbie for the past seven years at BC Housing in the Research Centre, and every day I learn something new from Debbie. Debbie has created tools to inform operations such as the Tenant Survey and the Resident Outcome Evaluation for Modular Supportive Housing. Debbie has also created tools to support the nonprofit sector and other stakeholders in their work such as the social return on investment, the community benefits of supportive housing, and Indigenous homelessness videos. Debbie is an amazing colleague, a consummate professional, a confidant, a friend, a mentor, a wise counsellor, a shoulder to lean on, a visionary, and a leader. Debbie, you have left a remarkable legacy and one which will remain with us for years to come. Debbie is leaving the housing sector a better place and that will remain a lasting tribute to Debbie's professionalism. Debbie Krause has had an incredible impact on the affordable housing sector in Canada through the research that she's done, through the reports that she's created, through the homeless counts that she's guided. She has helped us to find the best ways to address the affordable housing crisis and, and address the issues of homelessness and she will, her legacy will stick with us for many years to come as we follow the work that she's done. I just want to say, um, Debbie, congratulations. You definitely deserve this award. And thank you for all the support you've given to us here in BC. When I was at law school in Toronto, I had the opportunity to work at a legal clinic Parkdale Legal Services. I came to realize that most of the issues we were dealing with had to do with poverty and inadequate social programs. I decided that I wanted to pursue a career in social policy work after I was called to the bar as a lawyer. I was very lucky with my first job with the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, I was a policy analyst responsible for the social services and housing committees. And I fell in love with housing and the housing committee. Now I felt that housing was the most critical thing that can affect people's lives. We all need a decent place to live, a place to call home. And that's what I wanted to work on. While the importance of housing drew me in, I think it's the people who kept me involved. I have really loved being part of the housing community, uh, working with people across the country who are devoted to housing and ending homelessness. One of the reports I'm, I'm most proud of and um, think has had the biggest impact is a report on Housing First. Homeless, it was called Homelessness, Housing and Harm Reduction, Stable Housing for Homeless People with Substance Use Issues. This was the first national study in Canada to investigate housing programs for people experiencing homelessness and living with serious addiction issues. And this was done for Canada Mortgage and Housing in, in 2005. And I feel that this report has had an impact in recognizing the importance of permanent housing in addressing homelessness and that housing along with the supports that people want and need can work for everyone to end homelessness.
It is my honor to welcome Debbie Krauss to accept the Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations, Debbie, and thanks for letting CHRA and all of our members celebrate the huge impact that you've had. Over to you. Uh, well, thank you very much, Tim. I am truly honored and grateful to receive this award from, from CHRA. And I'm thrilled to have it uh, presented by, by you, Tim. I remember when we both appeared before the, the Senate Committee on Poverty, Housing and Homelessness in 2007. And you did a great job explaining the importance of, how, of housing and showcasing the, the Phoenix youth programs in, in Halifax. And it's people like you, many other CHRA pioneers and the people who had the greatest influence on my career who I would really like to thank today. First, I'd like to thank Gwen Simmons for inspiring me to work in housing. Gwyn was the co-chair of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario Housing Committee where I got my first job and Gwyn encouraged me to attend my very first CHRA conference uh, in the 80s and that certainly got me hooked. I'd also like to thank Peter Smith who was general manager with Peel Nonprofit Housing and who was very active on the CHRA board and got me involved too. I'd like to recognize the dedication and determination of CHRA's former executive directors, uh, particularly Sylvia Haynes and Sharon Chisholm, who I worked a lot with, who persevered through the difficult times when federal funding for new housing programs was cut. And they continued to make sure there was ongoing research and education to support the sector. And way to go, Jeff, for taking CHRA to a whole new level. I would also like to thank the wonderful people I was able to work with as an independent research consultant, particularly Margaret Eberly, Jim and Catherine Woodward, Michael Goldberg, Luba Serge from Montreal, as well as Paul Dowling, Alice Sundberg, and Joff Pomerleau. CMHC also deserves uh, credit for funding a great deal of really good research that supports the sector. And a big thank you to Jim Zamparelli and Fanis Guamenos. Thanks also to BC Housing, including Shane Ramsey, for its support to CHRA and its commitment to high quality research. And especially to Karen Hemmingson for her vision and leadership. I'd like to thank Dennis Carr, a former recipient of this award, along with Janet Creta and Margaret Eberly for putting my name forward, and Alice Sundberg, former recipient of the Graham Emsley Award, Derek Ballantyne, Celine Mobley's, and the BC Housing Research Center, Tammy Bennett and Rebecca Signer for their support. None of the work I have done would have been possible without all of you amazing people and lots of others who I don't have time to mention today. A big thank you. Well, thank you, Debbie, uh, for those gracious words. I'm sure there are people watching this today who uh, have become more inspired to progress in their career and to do more because of learning of your impact uh, and your work. So congratulations and thank you. And thank you, Tim, for the presentation. Um, so that concludes the presentation for this afternoon. Uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you to the award sponsor, Yardy Canada, as well as our new sustainable award sponsor, the FCM Green Municipal Fund. Uh, we'll be featuring our award recipients in the next newsletter that will be going out in the coming days uh, on our website and in our 2022 annual report. And just a reminder that the final set of workshops will begin uh, very shortly at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, check your program for those, uh, for those workshops and be sure not to miss our fireside chat with the relatively still new uh, federal housing advocate, Marie-Jose Ull, which will take place at 5 p.m. Eastern time in one of really her first public appearances uh, since being named as the uh, new uh, housing advocate. Donc, un fois encore, merci pour vous tous. 
Uh, félicitations à notre, uh, notre gagnant aujourd'hui. Uh, and thank you to everyone for everything you do. Uh, we hope to uh, continue seeing more of you and, uh, and hope to honor more of you in the years to come. So once again, thank you. Merci encore. Enjoy the rest of your day.